Hello everyone and welcome to Blockonomics. In this tutorial, we are going to see about the Valet service which is a self-hosted service which provides easy to use REST API interface. Let us start with installation first and after that we will see the usage of Valet service using Postman tool. This is the GitHub repo that we are going to use for installation. If you see the readme file, you can find the features of the Valet service and below that you can see the installation procedure. So for installation, we need a virtual environment of Python version greater or equal to 3.8. Let us start creating the virtual environment. I have created a folder called as demo and inside this I am going to create the virtual environment. Using the source command, I am activating my virtual environment of Python version 3.8. So in the first step, we are going to install the required packages of valid service. Let us install them one by one. As I have already installed the packages, it says it has been already satisfied. Then in the second step, let us install Electrum for storing bitcoins. Firstly, let us install the required packages for installing Electrum. Next, we will download the tar file of Electrum from the internet. Once it has been downloaded, you can unpack it using the tar command. Then, you need to install the packages that are required for running the Electrum. Once you have completed these steps, Electrum has been successfully installed in your system. As a third step, our main part arrives, that is, installing our valid service. Let us first clone our repository. So, once the repository has been cloned, let us install the required Python packages. After installing the required packages, let us change the directory to valid service. Then as a first step, let us initialize the database using the command python dv underscore model dot py. So by this command, our database has been initialized successfully. For configuring the valid service, we need to do some basic stuff. Firstly, let us copy the config.ini.sample to config.ini. Then we need to set the API config of use testnet to true because we are going to show the demo using the testnet bitcoins. Then let us create a wallet by using the create wallet command. The create wallet command takes one parameter which is the password of the wallet. Once the wallet has been created, you can see the information about the wallet that is ID, password, seed and the XPUB key. Then we need to keep an API password for authentication so that only the HTTP calls with this API password will be allowed by the wallet service. After the simple configuration of the wallet service, we can start the service by using this command. Once you have started the service, you can see logs coming through. Now, let us test the valid service using the Postman tool. Let me first create a tab in my terminal with activated virtual environment. Then, we need a receiving address for adding test bitcoins in our wallet. For that, we have a command called as get unused address which takes two parameters, the ID and the password. Once you have got the receiving address, you can use any one of the bitcoin faucets to add test bitcoins in our wallet. With one of the bitcoin faucets, I have added test bitcoin to my wallet. You can check the bitcoin balance of your wallet using the command line interface command which is get balance. The get balance command also takes two parameters, the wallet id and the wallet password. So now here you can see the confirm bitcoin balance amount. Now let us see the usage of HTTP API calls by using the postman tool. So Postman is a tool where we can test the API calls and check for the responses. Let us test our valid service which is running at the port 8000. Firstly, we have the API called as present with which we will find the estimated fee for our transaction. Present is a post request, so it requires a JSON body of 5 parameters. Firstly, the address. The address is the address to which the Bitcoin needs to be transferred. Here, 
I am specifying a Bitcoin faucet address. Then it requires the wallet ID, the wallet from which the Bitcoin needs to be transferred and the respective password of the wallet. Then we need to specify the BTC value that is the Bitcoin amount that needs to be transferred. Then the API password for authentication. Now let us make this API call and see what happens. Okay, uh, it is not BTC value, it is BTC amount. So now you can see the estimated fee for our transaction. Let us schedule this transaction in the queue so that it will be sent when the residual time is met. The API for scheduling is sent which takes exact parameters as the pre-send. So when we make the API call, you can see we get the estimated fee and also the serial ID, which is the unique ID with which you can get the details of the transaction. When we fetch the queue, we can see our transaction in the queue list and this queue will be tried to send only after a threshold time. So all the transaction that are being scheduled within this threshold time will get badged up in this queue. Let us make an another transaction so that it get batched up in that queue. After making the API call, you can see the estimated fee and the serial ID of the new transaction. So when we fetch the queue now, you can see our new transaction would have been also added in the queue list. So here you can see our new transaction and the old transaction. So below the transaction list, you can see the total amount and the total fee that will be sent during this queue. The sending of the queue during the attempt is totally dependent on the FA ratio which is total fee divided by the total amount. In our queue, the FA ratio is 0.086 which means it is 8.6% of the total amount. Below the FA ratio, we have the FA ratio limit which determines the limit of the FA ratio for the send attempt. In our case, the FA ratio limit is 0.05 which means it is 5% of the total amount. But the current FA ratio limit is 8.6%. So this attempt will not succeed because the FA ratio is greater than the FA ratio limit. Only if this queue gets badged up with some more transaction and the FA ratio gets lower than the FA ratio limit, this attempt will get succeeded. Otherwise, the attempt will fail after the threshold time and the next attempt will be started. This time, the FA ratio limit will get doubled itself so that it will avoid customers to wait for a long time to receive their bitcoins. So in this attempt, the FA ratio limit is 0.1 which means it is 10% of the total amount and the FA ratio is same as before 8.6% of the total amount which means this attempt will definitely get succeeded. As you can see, the queue has been emptied after the second attempt. The main use of using FA ratio and FA ratio limit is that it initially tries to send the bitcoins at a very low fee but as the time increases, it increases the fee threshold so that the customer doesn't have to wait for a long time to receive their bitcoins. If you want to get the details of the transaction, you can make use of the unique ID, which is the serial ID of the transaction. We have an API called as detail, which takes the unique ID as the parameter. So when we make this API call, you can see that we get the address to which the Bitcoin will be transferred and the amount of Bitcoin that will be transferred. To deploy in production, First we have to stop this testnet server. Then we have to change the use testnet flag to false so that we can create a wallet using mainnet and start receiving real bitcoins. So I am changing it to false and then I am just creating a new wallet. Once the wallet has been created, we can use the expub key to add it in our new store. Let us go to the Blockonomics page. I have already logged in. If you don't have an account, you can create one. So let us go to the merchants page. In the merchants page, you can see the stores tab where you can create a new store. For creating a new store, we need the XPUB key. So I'm just going to copy it from the information and paste it here. We also need a sample receiving address. For that, I'm going to use the command line interface command to get an receiving address. We can also specify any tag and save the changes. So now I have successfully created a store integrated with my wallet service. Now you can continue to use the new API addresses and HTTP callbacks 
for receiving the bitcoins and the received bitcoins will come to your wallet service which you can send by calling the wallet service api endpoints hope you guys have understood about the wallet service and the installation procedure if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment section and the link to the github projects and other important links have been linked in the description below do not forget to visit our reddit and twitter pages which are also linked in the description and that's it keep using blockonomics bye bye